celebrate what it meant <laughs> Do remember and celebrate it again Right? Newly winners, we celebrate where it went <laughs> And so different, we celebrating the hymn Right? You sing along, you celebrating the hymn Bet them to prove me wrong, you be celebrating the end Tell them it's crew first, we celebrating with Ken And fuck a E for effort, don't celebrate the attempt My attempt be, everything to rent be Call it hand in hand, but a hand can't be empty So I was in the basement, sparring with complacency And my weed even got me off when it would tempt me Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? It's a Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. To me, that, that poem is it's short, but it means so much, you know, everything it says. It's kind of like right to the point. It's simple, but it has all these layers to it, you know, and uh, world-renowned poem, obviously. And I, I wanted to name the album A Dream Deferred because it, it kind of picks up on the story that I began telling on The Salvation. If you look at The Salvation, the album is about temptation and, you know, which way to go and right and wrong and left and right. And, you know, when you're dealing with these things, you, the decisions and the sacrifices you make to go in either direction and then once you make those decisions what happens this album is about what happens this album is about once you've made those choices and you made those decisions this album is, is about what happens now Like whatever hoe we needed was a reason all this money they been showing they got reasons through the ceiling. Showing they got reasons through the ceiling All we wanted was a part All the seeing is believing from the jump is from the heart Pardon we with all this breathing All this anticipation All this keeping this shit even All these hands in the way When all they reaching is beneath them All these plans we done made All we see is what we keeping All you standing in the way Is only leading us to be a bet Whatever on the vision If they get it then they on it If they don't but they close enough to see us in the door yeah, After think, that little pause Yeah I think I might do the first half over Okay so all this yeah. Let's do it. So, lead single off the album, Give It Up. Uh, the way the song came about, you know, I had the title for a while. It just played in subliminally with the rest of the album with a dream deferred. And, you know, if you look at songs like the Rage of Romello and Realization and all that, it kind of, the album plays out a certain way where, where you may think I'm leaning in a certain direction as far as the outcome of my career. And Give It Up was just another one of those titles where it could have went a million and one different ways. But more so than anything, I just had this idea of just give it up, just this whole anthemic type feel. And I'm telling Ilman, yo, man, I heard this dubstep stuff and, and you know, it's, it's really, really out of here. And he was like, well, it's funny that you brought that up. And he plays this beat and the beat winds up becoming that, 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 that. And I was like, yo, this is exactly the feel that I just heard in Atlanta. 
And he was like, yo, what up? And I started freestyling to it off the head. Just, you know, when I hear a beat that I like, I just start mumbling off the head. Nah, 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 whatever it may be. When people play me beats, they know if I like something because I'll start freestyling to it right away. So I'm freestyling to the beat. The old man's like, yeah, that pocket is crazy, yo. You want to do something to it? And I'm like, you know what? And I start spitting the actual verses from Give It Up to the beat. I start, you know, start going day to day. We on it. My day to day is flawless. My neighbors wait. And I was like, yo, it fits right there. Like, da -da 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 -da. like the pocket is right there. And uh, I was like, yo, man, let's re-record it. Like, let's just re-record the joint to this beat and see what happens. So there's actually two versions of Give It Up. One that'll probably never come out. The beat might get used for something else. And then the one that, you know, that you all know and love and ha has been out now for a little while, so. Yeah. I think I want to do this one line I want to do over, um, it's like over here. Google me in five world series show. Really though, clearly though. Hennessy and spade is all we cheering for. Long as A is with me out of here, head till they clear the flow. Playing now or never with well, whoever got me clear the blow. There we go. Know your way around like you've been here before. Okay, Too much of a line right over there. Okay. Yeah. Play from the beginning? The very beginning? Yeah. Now this is you. Yeah. Hey, this is you. Bars? No, nah, watch. Still call me S K Y Z O O. Say nobody did it closer. They was climbing from below them and they clocking where I'm throwing. Like I got it for the lower. Turn this room into a lobby. Like I got this wide and open. Ah. You know what I mean? And then the second verse too. Just like doing Sir Adler. Okay, okay, okay. And then we'll turn them shit into like what you were saying, like the distortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it like that. You okay. know what I mean? Distorted okay. Adlers. Yeah. Do you, are, are you specific on which particular yes. lines? Yes. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll do like one by one. We'll do we'll do one take with you doing them, okay. and then we'll see. so that we can see it, and then okay. we'll have Prince fill in each one. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's an honor and a privilege. I'm on stage anyway, might as well. Might as well spit some bars with them all about the, the triple threatness. You know what I mean? The beats, the rhymes, the lyrics, the handsomeness, and other things like that. Nah, man. Uh, and he got me rapping on dubstep. <laughs> I got all this shit. <laughs> he got me rapping on this dubstep, but you know, that's the new wave, so we're gonna make it happen. You know what I mean? Here, over here. Oh. So I'm gonna do it like. And I'm in new sneakers, few divas with two seaters. Swag attract swag, believe us. Backtrack when you see us. Money talks and echoes. Never feared the moment. I'm more so on my mellow. Now you just jumping right there. Oh. Uh. Or more so, Geppetto Flying everywhere, tear a line and in the air Dump the guts from my red low It's DJ Prince, make your girl hit for settles Dreaming to be on my team, I told her hell no Uh, what? Well, the song is called Give It Up It's produced by Ilman I honestly feel like a lot of the influence of that song was uh, We were in Atlanta, we did a show in Atlanta and um, I took Sky to a Subtract show. Subtract is like this dope overseas group, uh, very dubstep influence. So this is where you come in right here. Oh, wow. The drum roll. You know what I mean? Okay. And then the kick, the kick, the sub's gonna drop four bars in, into the verse. A sound he wasn't really, you know, you've heard it, but he he didn't see how like people reacted towards it. And I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, like, this is like that new wave. This is that new sound. This is what everybody's kind of going crazy for. I think he brought that idea to Ilman. And if you hear the beat, it's very dubstep influenced. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's crazy that for him as a lyricist to even like accept me as a, a DJ. Uh, on his track, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, I feel, are scared to even jump on tracks with people that are lyrical because they don't want to get bodied. You know, I have a little little eight bars here, but you know, that's that's enough from Scott to even show like, yo, like, this guy's nice, he's on my team, and yeah, give it up. It's, it's a really dope track, it's a party track. It's 
going to be a single, you know, and put me on a single, I was like, come on, man, so. So when you're working on an album, uh, you know, you want to be able to get as many people as possible that make sense to contribute to the project, whether it's production, side artists, or, you know, behind the scenes stuff, whatever it is, just like-minded individuals that get the vision. And um, if, you're, if you're lucky and blessed enough, you're able to get with some people who you never thought you'd be able to get with. And, um, can you send me that uh, for the first time track? Fall in love. Yeah, sounds, yeah, sounds cool, right? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, let's try it. Wonderful night. I didn't want to fall in love. Thought that one time was enough. But tonight, I think I might call you again. Baby, don't fall in love. Let's just make tonight another wonderful night. I like that. So the way I got with John, uh, my homegirl, Jesse Wilson, who's also featured on the album and uh, co-wrote some of the R&B hooks with me that's on the album and everything, grew up with her from day one for years now. That, that's the homie, that, that's family. And she's an amazing singer, songwriter, best singer I've personally ever heard, as well as songwriter. She's written tons of records for John Legend, Keisha Cole, Fantasia, list goes on and on. Um, you know, she's Grammy nominated a couple times over. So we were working on the album and talking about male R&B singers and I had this idea for a record which was Drew and Derwin and uh, you know, I needed a male voice on it. And she brought up John's name and I was like, yeah, absolutely, that'd be amazing to get with John. So she hollers at John and right away he was like, let's do it. So a week later, we in the studio with John, cameras is rolling, we filming everything. Me, him and her writing the hook together, I'm writing the bridge, he's doing the vocals and you know, we throwing ideas back and forth, pretty much putting this whole record together on the spot together collectively as a unit, you know, and filming the whole thing and everything is great. We all love the record, John loves it, everything is good to go. Months later, when it's album time and business time to turn everything in, powers that be, kind of, you know, uh, put the brakes on it and, and, you know, wouldn't clear the record due to, you know, what it would have took to get it financially and different things like that. So it's kind of, you know, it kind of goes back to the title of the album, A Dream Deferred, you know, when you're going hard to put something together or get something done and you get it done on your own merit, you know, you do it, you get everything pushed through the right way and then, you know, something jumps in the way and kind of throws you a speed bump or whatever it may be, i.e. A Dream Deferred. In, in the 25th hour, I, I called my man Raheem Devon explain the situation. I said, yo, this is what it is, da 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 da. Can you knock this hook out for me? You know, uh, just re-sing it as is and you know, do what you do. Raheem did it in a matter of days, sent it back, came out amazing. You know, couldn't have asked for a better person to come in and, and play cleanup and, and get it together and really get his, uh, his Mariano Rivera on, you know? So um, shout out to the big homie, Raheem Devon. We got a bunch of different things coming up as well, even outside of the record. But this was dope to be able to start our music relationship with this record. Hey, 
Uh, it's supposed to be 10. One bag plus And then I got some great shrimp too, so I know. Oh, you got great leaf? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it. Yo. You all the time with your load. Yo, come on. Don't let the fat fool you, nigga. This, nigga, this, nigga, this, nigga, this, nigga, this, LL, it's 89 under here, nigga. For your listening pleasure, we present to you the great debate. Being from New York, you know, I feel like I'm one of a few, literally, one of a few that's making music that reflects New York, that reflects the city, specifically Brooklyn, because everybody know I'm from Brooklyn. Queens as well, because I spent a lot of time in Queens and, and still do. Uh, but New York as a whole, you know, I feel like I'm one of the few, I'm not gonna say the only one, but I'm one of the few that's, I feel, makes music that reflects the city. And it's not about being stagnant or New York and, Fuck everybody else. It's, it's not about that at all. It's, it's more so just a representation of me and who I am and, and where I'm from and the people around me and the things around me, you know? So I think everybody does it. You know, Houston rappers make music that reflects Houston. They don't alienate nobody. It just reflects where they from. Or Miami or LA or Chicago or Detroit or, you know, DC, whatever it may be. And I, I feel like I'm one of the few here that's doing that. And proudly, proudly so, you know what I mean? Um, Again, it's not about being stagnant, it's just about forward growth with the music, but still having a piece of you and where you from and what built you within the music, you know? And uh, I think a dope representation of that is the way we started the album, which was uh, Dreams in the Basement featuring Jill Scott. So we did the record and then we started trying to figure out, you know, who would make sense vocally on the hook. And I wanted a female's voice that was powerful and meant a lot and had this thick, deep soul in it, you know, and started throwing around names that, you know, people may not even expect me to be up on or, or want to collab with, you know, Rochelle Pharrell, and, you know, we started throwing names like that around, Esperanza Spalding, and different people, and at the time, you know, my manager Soul and I went to, uh, went to LA to do some work on the album, get with DJ Khalil and different people like that, went out there, wound up going to a Ninth Wonder Fonte show, hanging out with Ninth Tay, everybody, you know, the whole fam. And VIP at the show, doing the fan thing, is Jill Scott. And uh, wound up meeting Jill Scott that night and introduced myself. And she was like, nah, I know exactly who you are. I've been a fan for a long time. I got all of your music in my computer. Like, you're an amazing writer. I'm like, oh, like, okay. You know, that kind of set me back a little bit. And I'm just blown, like, really? All right. And, you know, she's like, listen, if you ever need anything, let me know. And I was like, actually, yeah, I got a joint that you would be perfect on. In a matter of weeks, man, the joint was done. She came through, she nailed it. You know, it worked out perfect. So let's play it. So you can go with that, like. I think I'm gonna use between like the first and second take. Okay, I got all the takes up here. Yeah, straight, straight. Yeah, straight. and I'm gonna give this to you, so. All right, cool, so I can just piece it together. Yep. Otherwise, otherwise, Dream Man ain't enough. I mean, you know, huh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. World famous, well, at least the world famous to us. World famous Luigi's. Uh, Luigi's, we grew up on that, man. Best pizza in Brooklyn, if you ask me. You got a lot of spots not raised on, on Fort Street over uh, by Havana and all that. It's awesome. A lot of spots. It's a dope spot I know on, on uh, Flatbush. That's real dope. But right here, Luigi's is it. So we here in front of the crib, in front of the old crib. So this is where it all happened. This is, uh, you know, where I was at, where I came up. This was, this was the crib right here. So we used to be right here. We would see Big and them down there. It's like I said, Big, Big lived down the block. So we was here, Big and them was literally right there past the lights. So we would see Big, we see Kim, we see C's and the whole JM rolling through here and all that. So we was 10, 11, 12, 13. They was, you know, early 20s or whatever it might've been. So they was the older kids, the OGs or whatever on the block that we was looking up to. When I was little, I always used to want to rhyme for Big, because I've been rhyming forever. Everybody knew I was, on the block. I was the nicest, you know, young kid on the block, and in the neighborhood I was just spitting crazy. And I always wanted to spit for Big, and every time Big would come around, we'd be sitting right here on the steps. Big would be down there, or Big would be over there. And my friends would be like, yo, go ahead. I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to rhyme for Big, I'm going to rhyme for Big. And I'd fall back, I'd be like, nah, 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 I ain't going to do it. And then as soon as Big would leave, as soon as the Lex would pull off, or as soon as whatever, I'd be like, yo, Next time I'm around for big. And it made mine deliberate, made mine in remembrance of a couple of doors down. Cause when you neighbors with the greatest, your applause sounds Madison Square like. I rap for where it's like. If nothing else is saving you, um, squares, how do you feel about the new album? I feel like the new album is your best piece of work, hip hop wise, uh, of 2012. Your name? Yo! <laughs> Yo, what's good? It's your boy online, you know what I'm Rep from Jersey, you know what I mean? I don't even know who that is. As well. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, hey, go over there. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, the uh, album artwork, the artwork is amazing on the cover. Who did that? Uh, the artwork was done by this dude, uh, Fabian Cirolo. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's a dude from, from Chile. Uh, Chile, I think. That's how you pronounce it right. So uh, tell us a little bit, like, how many tracks are you featured on, on the new album? Oh, man. Um, a couple. <laughs> um, more than one. I can tell you that. About four, I mean, how many? That's like four or five. At least, I think five. Five, five, five or four, something like that. Yeah. There's a little thing we do in the studio whenever the food get here. We hear the bell, you know, we hear when they buzz the bell. We go, Quentin's on his way, Quentin's on his way. Because the food is like, you know, for us, the food is like the bud, because we be in dire need of it over here at our Big China Studios. So, Quentin's on his way with another J. Quentin definitely came through. Murder. Definitely, definitely. Quentin came through with the Mediterranean. From the thing. Mediterranean. <laughs> Okay, pack is full, okay, pack is full, okay, pack is full, tell him my pack is full.